Hi there folks, this is Mihai from Romania and today's episode is about cleaning and restoration. You know, people always ask me when I go to the market, um, when I go to the subway, Mihai, how do you clean your book binding dies so that they're so shiny and fresh and uh, exquisite? Well, it's your lucky day. This episode is about cleaning your book binding dies. As some of you might suspect, bookbinders are hoarders. I, for instance, hoard books, tools, and of course, bookbinding dies. Last month, I had the privilege of buying one collection of brass items from a retired bookbinder called Petre Lugos, who inherited them from his father, also a bookbinder. Having these fresh in my workshop, I decided to clean some of them, and with that occasion I could film and narrate the whole process, because why not? I'll present two methods as well, one being the more specialized approach, and the other being the household method. The first method will be used on these brass corner pieces. As you can tell, they have a cardboard lining glued on the back. This is an old method of using the dies, where the bookbinder did not possess a heated blocking press. The dies were not stuck to the press, but rather put on a heated plate and placed by hand on the cover to be struck. The lining serves as insulation for the hands not to be affected by the heat and to use manipulation. We have no idea what the adhesive used was, but the first step is to detach as much material as possible using a bookbinder's knife. More on that in another video. You should place the tip at the joining of the metal with the board and push in with moderate strength. There will always be a layer of board adhered to the brass, so there is not much danger of scratching it, but just to be safe, make sure that the knife merely rests on the brass, orienting the tip and the blade somewhat upwards. After this step is done on both of them, I usually spray the back with isopropylic alcohol and check to see if it affected the glue in any way. Being largely unaffected, I excluded the possibility of a synthetic glue, so I opted for the water and heat solution. Simply take a white brush, dip it in plain water and coat the backs evenly so it soaks as much water as possible. Some glues, especially bone glue or hide glue, react to water and heat so I use a hot air gun to reactivate the glue and water to moisten it and help it revert. The problem is old-timey binders in my country used one method or another to glue their dyes and PVA, rubber cement, bone glue and casing glue could be very well be used on their own or in successive layers to hold the dyes in place. After eliminating the possibility of it being only animal glue, I once again sprayed alcohol on it and hit it with a hot air gun until the glue decided to cooperate. Judging by the transparent slime the adhesive made in contact with the alcohol, I believe it was PVA after all. Yes, PVA is reversible, but I'll deal with that entire myth in another episode. The dyes are now dust-free, lining-free, but they're still oxidized and dull. We take one piece of crappy plastic container, place our dyes inside and proceed to flood them with a specialized brass cleaning sludge sold in shops. Now, I know that you're going to ask, what is it called? Where did you buy it from? Can I order it from you? This is a disease in the craft community. You don't need to buy this specific brand of brass cleaner. I bet that wherever you are in the world, you can order some type or another of a similar product. This is just what I picked up from my local shopping center. Use whatever you can afford, read the label and go for it. I apply the cream with a white brush the same I use for water because I'm poor, and let it sit for about an hour. The label said 15 minutes are enough, but I like to think that those nooks and crannies need more time to soak. And also, I got severely distracted by a cat. After the said hour, I began buffing the back and the sides with a clean rag, specifically felt, which is great for shining and buffing metallic surfaces. No need to wash off the paste because the fine particles are actually the agents that render the surface shiny after removing the oxide layer. For the final cleaning of the surface we need some fresh water in a cheap plastic container and this soft brush 
I used to brush my teeth with, which of course was a gift from my girlfriend, and I hope she is not disappointed in my current use of it. I began brushing the back and the sides, moving to the face, using more than one direction of brushing in order to clean all the depressions of the sunk brass. I dipped the whole thing in water to remove part of the sludge, and then began brushing again with lesser substance and more water of course. After about 20 minutes of brushing, the result was quite remarkable. The brass is clean on the back, on the sides, and on the face, and in the depressions. Next step is drying the dyes with a soft cotton towel to prepare it for the final shine. For this final step, I made a strop, just like the one used for honing blades from veg tan calf split leather, glued on a plywood board. Then I applied some of the same cleaning compound and used my trusty Bob Ross palette knife from my days as an artist to gently work the compound in the leather. After drying for a few minutes, I decided to do a test run and polish the edges just a bit to see how it works on a simple surface. Seems good. Now the back and of course the front. Now that's one shiny vintage brass bookbinding die. The result even astonished me because I rarely give this much attention to one piece of brass and of course it was my first time using this brass polish. Pretty satisfying. Please hit subscribe so that cat won't go hungry. Thank you. As I said in the beginning there will be two methods explored so this is the household method detailed on another die. I took my trusty cheap plastic container and placed a good amount of white vinegar in it. Then I placed the dye face up, completed with white vinegar until the piece was completely submerged and because I had the impression the sunken parts were particularly dirty and full of gunk, I left it to soak for 24 hours. After returning to it, you can already see the bluish tint to the vinegar because the copper oxide on the face of the dye reacted to the vinegar, forming a well-known blue compound called copper acetate. After draining the stinky toxic bluish vinegar in a bottle to dispose of later, I grabbed a regular household abrasive cream, ripped the label because I'm an imbecile, glued it back and began covering the soaked dye with it. I began brushing the back, the sides and the face as usual in all possible directions, taking care to wash it with clean water every now and then. The results were below expectations, so I decided to go creative and use the polishing cream I've seen work miracles. I smothered the brass piece in the set's white slush and waited for about half an hour. After that, I placed the die on a piece of board for better grip and pressure and began buffing the backside with the aforementioned piece of felt. The results were remarkable. I also took the soft brush to the face and began scrubbing away like there was no tomorrow. Then I took the piece to the buffing strap, as with the first pieces, and began buffing the sides a few times to test the efficacy. Moving on to the face, due to its intricate surface, some elements might be left unpolished if moving it on the strop was unidirectional, so I turned the piece four times and continued applying pressure while buffing. So far, so good. Hope Mr. Lugos will be proud of how these turned out. If you happen to like my content, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button, and if not willing to join my Patreon, at least do whatever you can to donate some funds to Ukraine. Fuck Vladimir Putin. Slava Ukraine.